Hi everybody, today we're working on a uh, 2008 Clubman. He has a, a thermostat code, so we're going to replace the thermostat. Okay, we'll go ahead and try to read the code off of this car. Okay, we've got a P0597 code, which is a thermostat heater control circuit open. So the way to resolve this is to replace the thermostat housing, which includes a, uh, a control unit that actually actuates the thermostat. Okay. Here's the uh, thermostat housing for the R56, the uh, N14 motors, and the Clubmans. This is one of the most over-engineered parts I've ever seen. The thermostat is actually here inside the housing, so if you ever have a bad thermostat or sensor, you have to replace this entire thing. So the thermostat housing that we just looked at is underneath all of this stuff. So we're going to have to clean out this area to get down there. So we'll go ahead and jack up the car a little bit. We need to get a, a bucket under there to collect some of the coolant. Okay, right under here is a, a connector between the two sections of hose. And so all we're gonna do is uh, we'll loosen one of these clips and then just drain everything out into a bucket. Now we'll remove the uh, intake tubes. And take out the cool air inlet. Disconnect the brake uh, booster hose just to get it out of the way. So to take off this EQ cover, we need to pull this 10 millimeter socket right here. There it goes. Okay. Yeah, we've, we've already taken off all the air intake and now we're starting to get into some of the wiring. What we can still see down here, the uh, thermostat housing is still pretty well hidden. So just another layer of wiring and we should start to be able to get access to it. So before we disconnect the uh, engine control unit here, we'll, we'll uh, first come over here and uh, remove the negative terminal on the battery. Go back to the EQ and rotate these clips here. One, two, three. This clip is too hard to remove, so just cut off this and put a new zip tie at, at the completion. Okay, next we need to remove this plastic uh, cover for the wiring. We'll remove the vacuum hose off of the bottom side of the vacuum pump here. And the hose off of the uh, front of the uh, turbo unit. Okay, this wire here is going to like three different, three different connectors down there. It looks like it's going to the O2 sensor as well as a couple of other modules so rather than disconnecting it we'll just um, kind of lift this up out of the way and work around it. We do need to disconnect the uh, thermostat sensor of course. In Mini's infinite wisdom they put the clip on the bottom side of the the uh, connector. Some of these clips are pull clips and some are push clips. So boys and girls the only, only way you're gonna get this one off at the bottom here is using a pick you actually need to get under here and uh, push up on this one. You have to push up on it 
in the upside down orientation. Okay, here's another clip of the same style here so you can see what I'm talking about. I just want to get under there and pull up on it. And at the same time pull up on the clip itself, pull out. And we'll remove the uh, block, block uh, temperature sensor here as well, same thing, just to get out of the way. All right, so next here we have to disconnect uh, the, the two uh, radiator hoses and the two heater core hoses. And then we can uh, start to disconnect the, or loosen the 10 millimeter fasteners all around here. When you remove the heater core hoses, you're probably going to get a lot of co coolant leaking out, so uh, keep, make sure your bucket's ready to catch any coolant that drains out. After you take off the heater core hoses, uh, orient them in the upward direction to reduce the amount of coolant that drains out of the heater core. Okay, all of the main hoses are disconnected. Oops, there's one more. We got one more coming off the front here, which goes to a mystery location. All right, I've loosened the hose clamp for the uh, heater hose, the the coolant hose that goes through the turbocharger. But it's it's fairly stiff, so what I'm going to do is, uh, after I've loosened up the 10 millimeter fasteners and start pulling the thermostat housing away. At that point, I'm going to uh, disconnect and then reconnect uh, the hose on the bottom here. Okay, so there's one 10 millimeter socket up at the uh, fastener at the top here, and then two on the bottom. All right, this last bolt right here is at a little bit of an angle, so I think the easiest way to access this is going to be a deep drive socket mounted with a wobble uh, half extension. That will give us just the right angle we need to get the socket onto the bolt here. And then um, come over the top of the shift linkage here, because if, if we go straight out first, we can't get the socket onto the uh, the wrench onto the socket because first the heater hose out inlet is in the way, and then if you come out farther, we've got this shift link extension here. Now this may be different for manual transmission cars. This is an automatic, uh, but the uh, wobble extension gives us the clearance we need to work the wrench. Okay, so now we're loose here. Uh, like I said, the only connections right now are this, this uh, uh, hose connection going to the supercharger, which is actually coming, falling right off. There it goes, making a mess as it comes out. And then the, uh, at the back side, there's this longer tube which goes into the uh, discharge hose from the, uh, well actually I think this is the supply hose to the water pump at the other end of the car here. So uh, we'll be able to wiggle and pull this out, but we need first to disconnect a, uh, a metal retaining clip, which is under, under the uh, intake here. On this car, the clip is pointing upward. I can feel it right here. I'll try to get the camera in there so you guys can see what, what I'm talking about. There's a metal clip, which is very hard to see directly optically from human point of view. But there's a clip down here, right here. And we just need to pull that pull up on that clip. Uh, you can do it almost just by hand. You just pull straight up and out. The easy part is taking it out. The hard part is going to be putting it back in. And now with just a little bit of an O-ring uh, refriction, we'll be able to pull this thing just straight out, wiggling as we go. And there it goes. Okay. And there is the Jarvik 7 artificial heart, an engineering masterpiece. I'm going to spray just a little bit of seal, uh, silicone here to help things slide back together more easily. So we start assembling in reverse order. 
first we need to guide it into the uh, heater, the uh, water pump tube here. So as you push in, uh, just pre-connect the uh, hose clamp here. Just, just guide it back onto the bottom hose to help you out later. And then push in on the, uh, the thermostat tube here. I mean the uh, water pump tube. Get your clip ready to re reattach to the water pump tube. And then you're going to have to kind of go by feel here because it's you're, you're not going to be able to see what you're doing and do it at the same time. And then visually confirm that it's in the correct spot. Uh, try pulling back out on the uh, tube itself and make sure that it cannot be disconnected to confirm it's in the right spot. And it looks like it is. Uh, hand thread in the bolts one at a time and don't start tightening any of them until all three of the bolts have been started to be threaded in by hand. And grab, grab the tip of the socket with your finger to prevent it from falling off as you're guiding it back in. Once you've threaded them in, you can hand tighten them down to about seven or eight foot pounds. Not too much torque is needed. We'll reconnect this bottom hose clamp. This bottom one's a little bit tough because it just it just barely expands large enough to slide it off of the, the, the hose. So you have to kind of squeeze it really good. Okay, that one's on. Okay, all the small hoses have been clamped back on. Now we'll do the two uh, the two radiator hoses. All right. All the hoses are in. Now we'll start re reconnecting the wiring. Brown goes to brown. Gray goes to gray. The blue and black one goes back in here. This guy connects back into this one. Turn 45 degrees to reset. We'll reconnect all the EQ wiring. Reconnect the vacuum hose to the bottom of the uh, vacuum pump and to the turbo device. Reattach the snorkel. Assemble all this stuff. Okay, last up top, we'll connect this guy right here, and then there's a the last uh, wiring connector right here. Don't forget that last one. Before you start refilling the uh, coolant, make sure to reinsert the pipe here and uh, put the hose clamp back on. All right, so now we'll start refilling the coolant. Uh, and when you do that, you're gonna want to loosen up the bleeder screw. The bleeder screw is right down here, a little bit hard to see. So we'll loosen the bleeder screw about three, one, two, three turns. Just enough for air to escape, but not enough for the bleeder valve to fall out of the housing. If you wanna reuse your old coolant, use a coffee filter or a paper towel you can filter out the impurities and just uh, put it right back in.
Okay, so we've put back all the coolant that we drained. We lost probably a liter or two on the ground here. Uh, the bottle is full. I'm going to uh, loosen up that. I can see bubbles are still coming up, and I'm going to loosen up the bleeder valve a little bit. And sometimes you can actually push on the hoses to help to burp it. We'll see how much more coolant we can get in there, but then what we'll have to do is actually start up the car, run it a little bit, and wait for the air bubbles to work their way through. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing the uh, radiator hose here, the one that I can reach, and just kind of gently squeezing and letting it go, doing a pump action, and it's actually forcing the fluid through. And as I'm doing this, it's pushing the air out of the uh, system and into the bottle. And so I pretty much drained the coolant reservoir doing this. Yeah, I can I can hear and I can see the uh, coolant starting to come out of the ble the bleeder bleeder valve here. So what we'll do is we'll fill up the bottle back to the maximum mark. We'll start the car. We'll put the cap on, and we'll run it just a little bit until it gets up to operating temperature, and uh, bleed bleed finish bleeding the system. Oh yeah, and before. Uh, starting the car, got to put the battery back on. But within about three or four minutes, it should start to warm up. What we're trying to do is get the thermostat to open up. You can actually see the bubbles coming out, being forced out of the system here. Okay, so we've started to build some pressure here on the hose. So I'm going to just crack this, this uh, bleeder valve here. And let's see if any air comes out. There you go. The air came out and now water is starting to drain out. So I'll close it back up again. Okay, so we've uh, hooked up the machine here. We've cleared the code. It looks like the code's not coming back, so we'll keep an eye on things, but I think we've solved the problem for this car.